welcome back it's Christine again with the artist pod and today we're going to be drawing a stellar sea eagle as always I'm using a Wacom Intos Pro tablet and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop so well, let's get arting all right so here's the stellar sea eagle um, it is a full body instead of a portrait I know I usually do portraits but uh, someone had requested me to do a full body one because they have distinctive white bands on their arms they also have like a little white on their face um, but the white bands on their arms and the white by their tail will really identify them uh, as the as the stellar sea eagle. Um, because it's a full body, it's a little quicker. So I always create in Photoshop. I'm usually drawing on a 15 by 18 inch um, canvas, if you will, and then my brush size, um, which is just a standard hard round brush from Photoshop, I set to uh, pixel uh, 15. So it's set to a size of 15. So on a full body like this, it means it'll go a lot quicker. Um, and shadows and highlights will be a lot quicker. So we're going to get started by the head. So there's some white here. This is all yellow. So we're just going to draw this out. One in between the other. One line in between the other. To mimic feathers in this case. I was about to say fur, but for our feathers, it'll react the same way. Um, I might have to get in close because you've got to be careful around eyes. Um, it's it's something that we always look at our eyes so typically on birds there's like a swoop down and going the other way it's kind of coming up they have like a ring of yellow around their eyes too you'll see that in a lot of um, eagles and then you know under here you got some feathers as well So you have almost, it's a, a transition of a type of feather on the head. It's usually smaller, downier type of feathers. And then you'll get into the big, you know, swooping feathers as you get into the body. Um, I don't often draw out, you know, feathers uh, to look feather-like because this style imitates it well enough. Um, and then I'm just making sure up here, since we're dealing with such little space, right? You want the white to come up and then back down to indicate he's rounded. But right, otherwise it's just doing these, you know, these lines. And as it comes down, they'll get longer because the feathers will get longer. <laughs> the nature of feathers and typically fur um, and so this is just a sketching step I'm uh you know when you're you're dealing with um, animals and and especially a composition that's a full body you want to make sure that there's no line conflicts um, won't make as much difference in areas where there's highlighting but in the event I have uh, several lines going in different directions um, it will make a difference where they're shadowing sometimes you can kind of see it if you've made a mistake in direction and what's happening so I tend to um, sketch it out you don't have to do this step you could go straight into just you know putting in full pin pressure so that's where the magic's going to happen, but I find it a lot easier to concentrate on highlights and shadows as well um, instead of having to worry about making sure I didn't mess a line up somewhere or have something going in the wrong direction. Um, so I do this. It's my solution to that. So they are dark brown. I'm making them a little lighter um, because, well, it's... A little easier to draw a little lighter it'll show up a little better on black but um, they are brown and not black although in some when you you know look them up they can look that way so if we take off that sketch that's what we have so far because the space is so small I have to do some fine-tuning as we get to that point 
and then we kind of run into where the wing is starting. And you have some white as a result. And really interesting bird with these white bands. And then down here you have the larger feathers of the body. I'll probably do some feather-like lines, but um, more likely in the wings than on the body itself. But I will extend these out, indicate that it's past the smaller down ear type of feathers. And just bringing it down. Um, not a whole lot of feather changes, right? You have the feet tucked in down here. So there is some white right up against the sky where you can kind of see it because their legs, legs are a nice white. It's actually a Stellar's Eagle. So they're primarily around like Asia, but one is currently flying around in the U.S. It's been spotted in the wild. Nobody quite knows how it got here. I guess it got lost. Um, and they're one of the larger species of eagles, so um, I think a lot of people up in New England, Maine and such are hoping to catch a glimpse of our wayward little friend. But they're pretty large. Um, I don't know if they were the largest species of eagle, but they're one of the largest. They're certainly um, bigger than a bald eagle. And then, you know, I guess he just sort of flew over. Right, so you, you have the wing running kind of into the body here as it all kind of comes together. And then we have the white. Okay. So that's what we have now. <clears throat> all right. So then you have the wing. You still have um, a little bit more feather like here, potentially. Feathers are relatively easy to do if you do decide to draw out in a feather pattern. You just, you draw a center point, right? So you would draw a center point on a feather. And then you have the sides kind of going off to the edge on an angle. From that center point. So that's how you draw a feather. It's super, super easy. Um, but, you know, you don't have to necessarily. We'll still pick up that it's, you know, a bird <laughs> and those are feathers. But it can be a nice detail and I might do it on the bigger feathers. So down here it's all the, um, you have the white dipping down. And it's easy to just kind of do a little bit of it. Especially once we add highlights and shadows, it'll just sort of fall into place. And we'll want to be able to highlight, you know, as much as possible. All right, so then you, know, you can't see it being mindful that all of these lines on a feather are coming off from that center point. Right, so it would go back into there. So if we pop that off, that's what we have now. You have that distinct look of feathers building up. And it's okay if there's some crisscrossing within that. It, you know, is what it is. That was somewhat my fault, but feathers are, um, because of how feathers are, not necessarily completely unheard of. And then, you know, feathers are going to go a certain way, so if you've only drawn out part of a feather, that's fine. It still makes sense as to what you're doing. 
right, and then you can layer it up. Oh, this is a little hard, but that's fine. There'll be some um, overlapping typically under the feathers themselves, so it's it's also one of the reasons why we'll we'll get used to kind of seeing that crisscross, right? Is they'll loop over themselves. So relatively easy, just make sure you draw right down the center that uh, center point and then just come off at this angle, a kind of forward angle. And then when you get to the top, you want to angle it so the feathers are, are getting close to the top. Of course, I mean, feathers can be damaged and or fluffed or looking a little different, in which case you would change some of that, but usually how it would go. And we got a little overzealous there. Now some of these feathers, right, they're half hidden under others, so trying to figure out where that center point would be wouldn't necessarily be in the center of what we see. This one looks like I drew it to be somewhat on top, so I'm going to use that as sort of my next big center point to sort out what's happening with some of these others. Um, but you know, the way that the feathers would be up uh, on top, underneath, the line I put in the center is the center of the feather, not the center of what we see. So um, that can be different depending on what's out. See, this one would be here, and then we fan out, and then it's partly covered. So then this center is partly covered out down to its tip. This one, right, it's partly covered down to its tip. And likewise with shadows and highlights, you know, that'll that's where all the magic happens in a composition, in any composition, really. So, and this one just kind of follows the edge. Same thing. It's okay to be um, not exactly even with the lines out. There'll be some overlapping with feathers. And then, you know, I constantly check to see how it's looking. Um, so far, so good. And as we get to the tip, that'll be more and more noticeable and important as they start pulling away from each other. We're already getting some dips in there, um, but once it really starts fanning out, And so even these guys somewhat partly covered, right? And this one's probably on top. Or that's the order that I've made it. But this is why this sort of step, I think, is so important, because that helps me sort out exactly what I'm doing and how I'm doing it and what I intend. Otherwise, it's, it, gets, uh, it can get tricky sorting out what I was planning without accidentally causing some line conflicts. You know, you don't have to, though. It's sort of my way of doing it, but it's whatever way you find it to be easiest. Okay, so the edge of this feather you would still see, but only the edge, so I'm keeping that line in. And you have this one that's also mostly buried Also, you wouldn't see the center on that one either. But we'll have it taking over. So I'm going to get the rest of the brown feathers for this wing done. Um, and then I'll come back to talk about this wing. It's more of the same, but the angle's a little different. Um, so I will be right back. Alright, so there's the sketch of 
the first one. And then the second wing. Um, so we have some angles shifting here, right? So right here would be the middle. Right, you have that middle that's twisting along because of the angle. And as the wing comes and our perspective shifts, um, it would create this sort of changing line where our middle would be. Um, to be more of that lopsided until we come back out and over and then we get that middle coming along here. And then, you know, still doing the same thing. So at the tip, that's still going forward and then splaying it out as it comes down. It's just now at a different, a different angle for that. Right, and so just following this, not a lot of space to work with, with my pixel size set this um, big. Let's see if I pop that off with what we have. You can kind of see the feathers there. Um, so, still works even though that angle has changed. Just staying true to the angle that we create, right? Trying to remember and figure out exactly what I'm doing here. Because it's going to shift with these as they come down and over. So shifting with them will help keep the feathers looking right, despite the newer, the new angle that we have. And so that's what we end up with there. So we still kind of get that crisscross pattern like um, the other feathers. It'll still read as feathers to us Obviously drawing it this way takes a little bit more time than if we were just drawing it like we did the body. Um, but it's not terribly hard to do. And like I said, it does it does add some extra detail. I often won't do it in the body. Sometimes I do, but it's much rarer. Um, so even if I'm doing it on the wings, it's not necessarily something we need to do on the body. We can suggest it though. It doesn't take much to suggest that there's feathers just by doing a small crisscross kind of pattern. If I decide I need to, because I might not do it at all. And so, you know, this one's a little faster because the other wing is turned in such a way we're catching um, more of its underside. as it's flapping up and this one's turned away from us so we're missing a lot of that. So it doesn't take long. And then we have the little, these little guys that connect into the white. But we can see even less of these than we could on the other side. Alright, so take it off and you can clearly see the wing coming up and over and that perspective shift in the feathers as they extend out. Um, and then these guys and then you can see the perspective changes here too so you have some jutting away, some small ones. And then you can kind of decide which you know feathers are taking dominance, which ones are over the others, which ones you see more. because there will be some overlapping, right? And just a little bit through here. Yeah, we're doing pretty good. Now let's jump to the white. So I always use kind of this off-white in the orangish tone. Sometimes um, I'll switch it to a bluer tone, but usually I keep it in the orange tone and never pure white. 
leaves me room in the event I want to build something up or I decide that I need an extra burst of highlight, then I can go pure white if I absolutely need to, but otherwise not really needed. Now, some of the feathers up here where this is white is a little bit more downy-like, like the head. So I'm not gonna draw these out like feathers except the tips where it would be, right? So this is more feather-like, but it goes into some downy um, like feathers instead. So real quick, just some of these tips are feathery. And some of them are not. Well, they're, I guess they're all feathery, but. And then in some cases, you know, you don't have a lot of room to do much. All right, so now I'm going to go more into what we did for the other. But have it coming down the wing, right? So as I bring this up, I'm curving in. See, right, I'm curving in. That's going to allow me to pull my line down and readjust the angle, but also help keep that edge a little bit more straight. So that I don't have an awkward like bump out of a line popping up somewhere and get a little bit tighter as we come towards this end. And then just, you know, fill in the rest of that. Because it's a little bit more downy we don't necessarily need to add that feather pattern we can if we need to try to make sure it's turned nice and in by the time it gets to these edges angle it appropriately right so if I back that oh, back that off now yeah starting to get a sense for that I'm going to do the face real fast, so this has some of those white feathers coming up. And then we have more of the same over here. Same idea, I'm curving it in along that wing, having a few that have distinctive we uh, weather, <laughs> weather patterns, feather patterns, and then otherwise just bringing it down. Matching the angle of the others, right? So as things come down, making sure I'm twisting it appropriately, especially because this perspective is changing, right, as we loop it. So I want to make sure that I capture that. Sometimes it helps going from the other side. Basically just need to create a little loop. See, and then just connect it back in. Now it's not this rounded, so it's kind of making it look like it's a big rounded section. It's not necessarily rounded, it's just turning. So that would be how we would draw it, but I don't think that it's really going to matter. So I think this should work still. Now we have um, the legs. So there's some white here where it's pushed into the other leg. And then some white here where it's connecting into the tail. Um, you have the two feet, so then you have the tail. You do the tail like we did the others. So you have somewhat a downier section. So I'm not going to do that here. Although you could. I mean, you know, all of these would be feathers, so. All right, so you have the foot kicking in over here, so this would still be a feather. 
We have some of this up here still connecting down. That's still feathery, but it's fine. And then just the same thing. That pattern pulled off on an angle off of the middle line. And then finally, we have, well, finally, we have the yellow. We'll do the eye later. There's not, again, there's not much space, so. We'll do the eye, beak, and, um, or the, the yellow around the eye, the beak, and the, the feet as the same color. So again, being careful around the eye. It's just, it's something that people notice. And then there is some bit of white in here off of the beak, but we're gonna deal with that as it comes. So there is the nose here, but this is so just around the nose. And it sort of swoops down. See this beak pattern on uh, birds of prey, often, especially eagles. I find it easier to go from the tip and draw backwards, which is what I just did, when you're trying to get to a tip. Make sure that lines up. It's typically a little dip here, and then it should just come straight back, although I didn't sketch it very well. And it usually will connect into the bottom as well, where it sort of tucks in where the mouth is. And then you're gonna have a couple lines of beak, usually, there's also usually a little bulge down here. So once again, drawing from where it connects, sometimes it's a little easier. And then getting close enough to figure out the mouth. Yeah, and we'll sort out this soon. Right, so we'll still pull all that beak in. Okay, and then feet. Just they're, you know, like usual, they're sort of tucked in. Um, so you have, you know, these claws that are sort of tucked into themselves. You would potentially be seeing some claws jutting out, but it's going to be just as easy not to do that. So we won't. <laughs> I'm just bringing that on in. They're, they're um, typically pretty wrinkly on their skin. So we can add some texture as needed. Same thing with this one. Kind of tucked behind the other one. I don't see much. Okay. So there's our sketch. Now it's a matter of adding highlights and shadows. So, um, debating on where the highlight should be. Thinking if I do above and to the right, I'm just thinking about how shadows would work. This is kind of angled. I could catch in potentially some light, but if it's coming from above, we might be on the end underside. Whereas if it's coming from above and to the left, depending on that angle, although it's it would also be in front of, not behind. And the wing is obviously angled towards us, so we would probably be catching some light. If it's above and to the left, we're gonna do above and to the right. Um, as always, that's above and in front of. 
because that'll potentially have the best chance for highlighting the subject. So I'm going to do the brown first with that in mind. Uh, I probably don't need that on anymore. Okay, so always checking the layers. Right. So above and to the right, so I'm going to be putting full pin pressure here, on the left side of the feathers, going a little bit in shadow on the tip, coming across that middle point and putting just a little bit, but letting that go into shadow on the other side. Right, letting that go into shadow, but putting some pin pressure on this side. Allowing that middle point to get some light and then having that go into shadow, making sure that's running to the other one. Right, as it comes under another feather, it would be getting some shadow to it. And so we'll fill it in. Yeah, you can see. Fill it in like that on all the feathers. And then in here, we'll just be doing, all edges are in shadow, right? So even this side on the light source, get a good angle with the head. So there's some shadowing here on the head, even though that's on the side of the light source. Not much before it's going to kick into full highlight. Shadowing along this back. Oh. Sorry, my hand rested on my keyboard and I must have pressed something. <laughs> I don't know what the keyboard shortcuts are. So I should learn it, but okay. And then underneath here, all of this would be in shadow. Up to some of this is going to be, you have some hair popping out. But you're probably going to be, because it's under the beak, probably going to be getting some highlight after that. So here under the beak, certainly shadow. And then his stomach, of course, because the light source is above, so all of this is in shadow. Even now, as we come to the longer um, feathers, because he's going to round away. Right, so all that. Following the lines I've already done. and just light, light pin pressure. So I'm not putting a lot of pressure here. Um, when I'm doing the highlights, I'm doing full pin pressure. Shadows, I'm backing off my pin pressure, but especially with a, a brush size of 15 that I didn't change, um, you know, the more lines you add, as I've mentioned in other drawings, the more lines you add, the um, brighter it can get too, and it's especially true when you have very little space to work with which is what I've done to myself. So under both of these, certainly shadow. All right, so. Just making sure that reconciles. And giving myself a little bit of a runway because we're going to need to feather in the highlight. So then adding the highlight here on one other spot. Right, they have that dip in here. That's against the eye. Create a little bit of a shadow there. And then full pin pressure as we work into that. Right, and you can see such a difference. running right into those other feathers. And then I'll just need to figure out where exactly highlight versus shadow changes over here. But right, so there's the head. And then once we add the white in, it'll be looking nice and nice and bright. And as I get close to the edges, I'm tapering off my pin pressure just a little to allow them to, 
to blend in. It's not as um, important down here because I have a ton of room so I can feather it in, but it will be up here because I don't have a lot of room at all. So I'm going to want to feather this in. Huh. Oh, that wasn't intentional. Um, right, until we get to that edge, which now we are. All right, I'm going to get the rest of his body and we'll be right back. Um, my video just froze. No. Oh, no, no, no. Come on now. Unfreeze, please. Huh. Well, so Photoshop uh, froze up on me. So now we're back way back here. Uh, apparently we're on even a different color. And I don't know how that happened. Because we're on the eye color, which we haven't even chosen yet. Um, so I don't know where I left off, but I'm going to finish up the body. Uh, and then I'll be right back. Hopefully smoother this time. All right, uh -huh. this is why we save often. Apparently I need to save even more often. Usually it only freezes up on me in the summer, but here we are. All right, so now I'm gonna push down a bit into here. And I'm not gonna put more pin pressure to do that. I'm just going to add more lines. And you can see even though my pin pressure is way backed off, um, it is still brightening it up. And we're just going to feather this in to make it a gentler transition from highlight to shadow, but to make it look a little bit more rounded. If it's too harsh, it'll look more flat. You want a nice, gentle, rounded transition from highlight to shadow here. So that, you know, our eagle looks like it's round instead of a two-dimensional object. We are creating the illusion of a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional plane. That's all artists are really doing. Keeping in mind contour, right? of the body. All right. And then backing out, that helps give perspective over how something's looking. If something looks too harsh or out of place, if it looks out of place to you, it'll probably look out of place to your viewer. Okay. I also just learned that if you want to save it quickly, Control S will save it for you. It's a much quicker way to go about doing that. I was going to save it. <laughs> okay. Now back to the wings. Right. Still doing that. Um, highlights and shadows making sure that everything is filled in so that all of this is running into each other and that there's no real gap and again this middle point and just over would also be in highlight still you want that to catch whereas this one's kind of tucked behind another one And so he might have a little bit of highlight, but he's also going to have a lot of shadow. And it looks like I have him pushing up into here. I'm also backing off just a bit as it gets closer and closer to the body. 
would be some manner of shadowing as it's hooking deeper and deeper in. Um, so these feathers will not be as bright as their counterparts, especially the ones that are at the tips. That would be nice, nice and bright. Still potentially picking up a lot of good highlights, but or some highlights, I should say, a lot of good ones, but just a few, right? I can brighten it up just a little bit. And that's what we have so far. Now I may end up darkening this color because they are darker than this. They're in the same vein of brown, but they're not quite this mm, bright. A little bit brighter over the ones they're on top of. We have kind of this downier section here. But doing this right adds a lot of texture into the wing. You can actually already see it into here. And then if we need to, we can brighten it up. Um, if I decide that's a little too dark through there. And keep pushing out. And then right, as this is brightening up, these would also be brightening up. Feathers blocking would create shadow. Right, because you have a feather on top of another one, so you would have some, some shadowing there for sure. Making sure that they're running into each other fully. This is the feather that's on top of the one underneath him. Obviously he has one on top of him. So fully filling, fill, fill, filly? <laughs> fully filling that in. Same here, right, you have the highlight. I think we're definitely gonna be brightening up some of this. And then this is gonna be going into shadow two. Midpoint would be holding some highlight and then off to the other side a bit as well. And I'll trace that back. There's that middle point. Tracing it back till he's going in shadow. This one's nice and solidly on top, so this guy has some room to be a dominating feather. And that center point having some light pushing on the other side, but I'm going to give him some shadow first. It'd be a little easier to do it this way. Only a little bit on this guy because he's underneath. Maybe less than what I just did. Yeah. And then keep building up. So I'm going to finish these sort of longer feathers. I guess it's beneficial to see it. Right, so this one's on top. It's a nice burst of light. I'm gonna do this other side in shadow real fast and then that'll get another burst of light. And then we have the two that are underneath that span out from that. Look at darkening the brown after we get all of this done. So I do think he's a little too bright. Right, so then this middle line gets highlighted into the other side. And as I'm pulling the other side, I am putting some amount of pin pressure, but I'm also backing it off before I let go. It's also why I'm very careful that usually I'm drawing from the center out because the way we naturally draw inevitably means as we're pulling away, we're, we're lifting up our pin pressure. And so I'm trying to be mindful of that. Um, whereas if I draw the other way, the opposite's gonna happen, right? I'm going to be putting more pressure here and less as I get to the middle, and I want it so that there's more pressure here and less as I get to the edge. All right, so then I have these two guys, which I'm gonna do 
shadow first, but there will be a little bit of highlighting. All right, so he's going to get just a little bit, but he is under a couple of different feathers. And so then you have this one who is solidly under. Leaving an intentional gap instead of pushing it all the way in here because they line up too nicely. And I don't want that to be mistaken for being the same feather. Give him a little bit, but for the most part he's underneath, so. Benefit to doing this is usually there's some amount of Um, direction change so it becomes easy to tell feather to feather what's what. Reality is sometimes it doesn't always happen but there's so much detail here though it's gonna be some manner of us um, filling in some gaps in our heads without being as critical of all the fine things happening there's enough that we might not be as noticeable see right when we look at the whole composition the imperfections in the individual feathers aren't as noticeable to us so then what we really have to get right is where the shadowing and highlighting is kicking in through the general wing, making sure that it's bright enough um, because of the nature of how we've done this. Sometimes, you know, when you have a composition that the bird is so small um, in relation to the amount of detail we're adding and the brush size, it can really kind of change what we're doing and just how much detail we're adding in. All right, now we have just this little section here. We have this, just this little section here. We'll be done with this side, following those same rules. And then the light, making sure it's all together. Middle has some first and then pulling it over to the other side creates a ton of texture this way and um, on a composition like this where we're you know it certainly adds to how long this would take if we were just drawing it straight it'd be a lot quicker however you know you have a composition like this where um, it's so small anyway so we're doing we're sort of making very quick strides. So we already cut our time by a lot because of how we did this. I'm just sort of making sure there's no big... We can have some dark spots, but I try not to leave black except in the eyes. Oddly enough, because <laughs> I do there for sure. So feathers super easy to draw, I just don't often because they can be time consuming. And realistically, typically, you know, even if you don't draw it like a feather, um, it'll still look like um, feathers in our eyes, right? Like we don't really notice that he's lacking feathers, it'll still look like feathers to us, whether you do it this way or not. But it is a great time to add in a lot of detail, and I am a big fan of adding extra detail. I think that can really make um, interesting compositions, you know, especially if you're not necessarily expecting it. You have a chance to add quite a lot. And with feathers, certainly you're adding a ton. Just don't forget to save <laughs> all the time. It's very disheartening 
when it freezes up on you, especially when you've made a lot of progress on something and you haven't saved it in just like a few minutes and now you have to redo it all, like I did a few minutes ago. It's very disheartening. Um, and we may temper out, you know, it's, it's sometimes, um, the extremity of the extreme, extremity, extremeness of the shadow, uh, can dictate how deep the, the dip is. And so we might temper off how extreme some of these shadows are, but you know, for now. Forging ahead, as always. And we'll take a look at that in just a second. Because that's not hard to do. Like down in here, probably brighten up some of this. Just where some of the valleys are. Some of these dips. Don't need to be this dark. I mean, there, sure, but we'll read it as there, even if it's not quite that extreme. Right. Yeah, see, that looks better. Almost looks too, I don't know if perfect's the right word to use, but perfect is what I'm gonna use for now. Almost looks too perfect. All these perfectly formed feathers when um, there would be some amount of uh, blending in that would be happening that we wouldn't be able to see them quite so nicely and curatedly. Some amount of overlap, especially between these um, softer downy feathers and their bigger counterparts. Still separate, just not as extremely separate. If I should darken this, it's already at a mid tone, but it shows up usually as a much darker brown. Once I add the white, the white may make it look darker than it is, um, which is what I rely on when I'm drawing gray. Uh, for black, when I'm drawing black, I'll use sort of this mid tone gray, right? I'll pull it basically this all the way over and I'll keep it into this kind of range here, because if I go any darker, it stops showing up as nicely. But the colors around it are what help make that happen. It just looks too way too bright right now. Okay. So same thing, right? Except on this side. And that left side is going into shadow. all of these guys. And it's at a uh, sort of a more extreme angle. So it's going to change it a little bit because we we're working with kind of mm, less room to express all of this. But we can still add in detail, right? You can still see those feathers. And you can see, you know, when I do that middle line, when I get to the middle line, I sometimes will draw it in. That's fine on a feather. Because they do, they have that center point. So, if ever you're not sure, you can draw it in. So I'll typically draw one side in first, right? Come in here, do that side. Bring it all the way down and then I'll draw that center line to restabilize the, the line of the feather before I hop over to the other side and draw these guys. And then we have these guys down here where you would have kind of the same thing. Where you're going to have on that right side that harsh highlight coming in. And then on the left, well, I'm going to fade a bit. Right, so even you have that tighter space, you still get the sense that there's feathers there. So a lot quicker on this side. 
because of our angle. We're on such an extreme angle. It makes it a lot harder to um, add in the details. And by I, I use harder very loosely. It makes the details go by quicker because it's, it's harder to add um, too much detail. So any little bit of detail um, will create a, a, an interesting effect, which you can kind of see. Get more chance to kind of play with this one. Some over here, but you know, this one is so exposed to us, we can do a lot more. With just that little bit, making sure that bridge is there. A little bit pushing to the other side. And then we're going to have kind of a flip as we bring this up. So now this is on the right side. I guess it was on the right side before. <laughs> but now it's turned and on the right side. A little bit more facing the light source in general. As we bring that down. Tips on the left being more in shadow. Although there's not, we're already working with so little space, we're kind of half doing that anyway. Now for the white, let's see what this does. Okay, so some white feathers coming up in here. Some amount of shadowing as it comes down to the beak. Um, because the face is turned just a little from the light source, depending on what angle we're going for. So right, we have that white. And then we're going to get some white here. Yeah, we definitely need to darken up this brown. Way too bright. All right. All edges in shadow, so giving this a nice good shadow here. Making sure it's deep enough to work in. And then matching kind of what we've done as far as shadows and highlights. Making sure all of the whites running into each other because it is kind of all going to be doing that. All right, so all of this. Not as concerned with keeping the feather look because at this point, it's running into those sort of more downy feathers where I didn't do it. So I'm just making sure they're kind of connected in. Right, and then it's just full pen pressure. Bringing it back and tapering it off as we bring it back to the edge. Right so that it's not um, too much of a jarring transition. There's the first one. Um, so it's so bright, again, I might have to taper off some of the shadows as it runs into the other feathers. It wouldn't be quite that uh, stark of a transition, but, you know, it's a basic idea. So same thing on this side, right? That front edge in shadow all the way from here, all of this in shadow. Then going right into highlight. Right, so have some highlighting here. 
the back of the head. So this will really help actually <laughs> edge the head because you have the brown connected to the white. And that'll help show the head, <laughs> incidentally. That's both wings, and now we have the white here. So here, this is going to be in shadow. It's behind the feet. Oh, there might be a little bit of highlight where there's probably, well, probably not because you have the tail. So that's shadow. This is shadow still under the body. but you're going to have a transition here to highlight um, and then some of this is at different spots. That's our tail feathers. All right. So this is leg. Doing the whole thing in shadow real fast. Just um, sometimes it's a little easier to sort out details this way. Okay, so obviously highlight. This is still highlight pushing into the brown so that it blends together. Highlight dropping down into a little bit of a shadow. Highlight because we need to cut it at the same point we did the other, which means now I start tapering it off. But up here is still highlight. Now, tail feathers. Um, theory, they would be, right, lights just coming from above into the right, so the tail feathers would be in shadow. But feathers, oops, that's not what I thought that was. <laughs> feathers, um, as I mentioned before, can catch, there's, they can be so thin that they can catch light through it, so we're gonna add it, add in more highlight than what you would think. So first we're going to do this sort of downy section of the feathers. I think it's that straightforward. That's just sort of filling in this whole segment. And then blending that together, letting that run into each other. Just enough to make sure there's like just a slight change in direction, maybe a little bit of shadow, but nothing big. Okay. And now. So same as we were doing before, just filling it all in. connecting it all together. I'm going to go back to the brown real fast and temper off this um, amount of shadow down here so it doesn't look like it's just going into this deep, deep abyss of um, white, which it's not really that dark. It's not such a overlapping thing to create such a shadow. It's just sort of on top of the other feathers. Right now the shadows seem to indicate it's much darker, <laughs> a much more prominent thing, and it's just not true.
Yeah, that's better. Okay, so um, now let me get the yellow. And then we'll look at darkening up the brown. Right, so, oh, and adding a little bit of white. So, against the eye, this would be bright. But on top, not as much. And then underneath. Well, that's coming out not as much. Because I'm adding white on top of here, I've got to be careful with how much yellow I add. So I'm doing all of this in shadow first because I'm not working with a ton of space. And it's going to be easier to sort out some of these details by getting the shadow kind of intact. And then dealing with everything else. Some amount of highlighting where the nose would be picking up some of that right there. Some amount of shadowing though where the, the um, nose is rounding down and into the beak, gonna have some highlighting over here. Nose is rounding down into the beak, I mean this section here. Not putting full pin pressure there because of um, the uh, Feathers, that'll go there, right? And then, you know, solid pin pressure through here. A little bit of shadowing here. But otherwise, that's solid. Not as deep as I have it. All edges in shadow, so at the top, certainly backed off. And as a beak, it, it's even more shiny, so it may. Um, be a chance to add an extra little burst of highlight. Bringing that down, all edges in shadow, highlight weighted towards the right, even as we get towards the tip of the beak. Not much space trying to weight the highlight to the right and not the left, but fading it out. And then of course you have back side here. I'm going to have some amount of highlighting down here before it goes into shadow. And even into shadow up where the beak would be connecting in. All right, so that's that. I'll add some white in just a second. I'm just going to get the feet done real fast. I'm going to do this all in shadow as well. May mostly be in shadow, but there might be some opportunity to add just a little bit of highlight. But because they're tucked under, um, not really a good, you know, not, not really primed for highlight. Tucked under the body like this. If anything, it's going to have a little bit of highlight. like against the foot and a few places where it's sticking out just enough to catch. I'll leave it at that because it wouldn't be much. Um, and it wouldn't be left that dramatically. All right, so then we have the white again. I'm just gonna do just a little bit here because there's some, some fuzz on the face here. But it's not a lot and it's hard to see. Oh, 
probably get away with not doing it, but yeah, it's a very, very subtle detail. Okay, and then I'm going to use the white for just a little bit of highlighting on the beak itself. I am just going to follow this corner down and fade it out because I can. Beaks would be brighter, so there's potentially picking up highlight. Okay, so still have the eye to do, but first I'm going to reconcile this brown. So that's where it is. Oh. I'm going to select all, nudge that brown layer, turn it off, start a new layer, come up here and darken this down with the filling it with the foreground color okay yeah I think that actually looks better um, and then we have the eye Oops. which is Right over here. All right, so starting a new layer, come in here. And we're just going to fill this in. Again, not a lot of space, so being careful. We're going to take the elliptical marquee tool and create a perfectly circular hole here. And then I'm going to select and inverse it, take that brush again, just make sure the edge against the pupil, nice and clean and then select, deselect. Okay. Start a new layer to add the highlights. First light on the opposite side of where the um, light source is and then fill it in uh, with full pin pressure on the side of the light source. Going into shadow um, up on the edges and on this back side as much as we can with the little space, very little space we have at the moment. Sort of fading it out as much as we can. Looks very pixelated because of how close I am. Get back out, there we go. Okay, and then we're gonna add the light flare. Again, taking the elliptical monkey tool, pulling in just a little bit of white for the eye. Maybe more circular. Can be ov ovular. Yeah, I don't know what's creating the light source. Typically the sun, though. <laughs> Push it into the pupil, go to edit, and then fill foreground color. And then we can kind of determine if that looks right. Too big, too small, too low, too in, too out, right? I think that looks good, though. Okay, so uh, the last thing I'm actually going to do is take off the sketch layers. I don't often do that, but on a composition this small, it makes a big difference. Um, so I'm just going to pop both of the white and the um, brown off. You can kind of see that makes a big difference. Right? How thick and quite a bit thinner. But I think it looks um, a bit better. However, then I'm going to do a quick fix of his underbelly. Oh, that is the wrong color now. To make it a little straighter. And then um, 
just debating on the best way to do this, but I think I'm going to take pure black and add in just a little bit of shadowing into the body. I did a little bit too much, so we're going to fade it out much like we do the other way. I'll have some shadowing up here and here. Just that wing would be casting down onto the body a bit. And then just making sure not to <laughs> create a weird line like I did. Fade it into Yeah, I think that looks better. There we go. All right, so that is how you draw a stellar sea eagle. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.